Do you like music? How do you like Spider's new album? No, it's not the name of a band nobody's ever heard of. I'm literally talking about spiders. Scientists have recently decoded the vibrations made by a spider web and converted them into sound. Listen. But you can also do the opposite. Convert sound into something visible. Sound is a wave of a certain length and frequency. But for example, color is also a wave, only in the visible spectrum. Does that mean we can see music? What color is the sound shh? What would happen if people communicated like spiders? And how will the human body change if we learn to see sound? Sound is a wave that moves through space at a speed of 343 meters per second. But ordinary vision is obviously not enough to see this wave. For that, you need something called Schlieren imaging. We'll need a light source, two parabolic mirrors, and a camera. The light from the source passes through a little crack and gets reflected from the parabolic mirror. Thus, all the light rays will become parallel. If you reflect them from the other mirror, they will get concentrated to a single focus. Now, we'll put a firecracker between these two mirrors, and we'll put a filter at the focal point of the rays. At the time of the firecracker explosion, some of the rays will change their trajectory and won't get into the camera lens. Thus, we'll see a shadow on the image, and it's a sound wave. In addition to the firecracker explosion, we can actually see other sounds, like a shot from an AK-47, a clap, and even the sound of a dropped book. But if Schlieren imaging seems too complicated, how about trying to read human speech from a bag of chips? A team of experts from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Microsoft, and Adobe learned to reconstruct sound by capturing vibrations of surrounding objects. They developed an algorithm that analyzes the microscopic fluctuations of an object. What happens is, when a sound wave comes into contact with an object, it makes it vibrate. These fluctuations are captured with a camera with a frame rate faster than the sound frequencies involved. In this way, the researchers were able to read human speech from a bag of chips at a distance of 4.6 meters. This experiment was later repeated with foil, houseplant leaves, and a water container. Imagine if people could see these micro-fluctuations of objects. How would we communicate? To see objects fluctuating from sound waves, our eyes would need to perceive at least 2,000 frames per second. At the same time, people would no longer need complicated speech organs to communicate. To transmit fluctuations, we'd need a long, snake-like tongue. To see sound waves, we need at least a camera. But can we see sound without it? In the 18th century, a physicist named Ernst Klodny conducted a strange experiment. He took a metal plate, put some flour on it, and started drawing a violin bow along the edge. The flour on the plate started forming a symmetrical ornament, which varied according to the height of the sound. It's one of the manifestations of cymatics, physical effects of sound waves. And it doesn't just work with plates and flour. Different frequencies of sounds can change the height of the flame in a Rubens tube. It's a pipe which is filled with flammable gas. The gas leaks from small perforations arranged in rows. It's lit, and the pipe is attached to a small speaker. Different frequencies of sound waves change the pressure inside the pipe, and the flames change their height. Just look at what it looks like. And yes, cymatics works with water, too.
Imagine if we used only sound frequencies to communicate, alternating between high and low notes instead of words and phrases. But then all people would need to have perfect pitch, and those who were born without it would be outsiders not only at music school. In such a world, our writing would look quite different. We'd use sand patterns on metal plates instead of letters. If you think thousands of Chinese characters are hard to learn, try to remember all these patterns. And not to forget what sound frequency they relate to. So, we know how to see sound with the help of various devices. But there are people in our world who can see sounds with the naked eye. This condition is called synesthesia. In such a case, the stimulation of one sensory system, such as hearing, simultaneously activates sensations in another one. People with something called chromesthesia, a variety of synesthesia, can see the color of different sounds. Nevertheless, each synesthete's sensations are subjective. For example, the sound shh may be green for one person, and for somebody else it may be dirty yellow or gray, depending on its pitch. If spiders had synesthesia, the spider web in the corner of the room would look like holiday decorations. But can we see sound the same way as people with synesthesia? The photographer Lyndon Gledhill tried to figure it out. He put a water tank on an acoustic column, added some neon light, played some sounds, and took a series of pictures. The color photos of these sounds of different frequencies turned out very abstract. Some scientists at a military base in Florida were able to generate some of the most detailed photos of thunder to date. The experiment required 15 special microphones and rockets reeling out spools of copper wire behind them to conduct lightning to the right place. They managed to capture the acoustic wave release of lightning strikes. We can also learn to move objects with sound. For example, dislodging blood clots or breaking up and removing kidney stones inside the human body without surgery. Or what about carrying drugs directly to tumors? A team of researchers from Scotland and the US believe that this will be made possible using acoustic force beams in the near future. This invention can direct sound waves in such a way as to create a low-pressure area. Due to this, it will be possible to attract small objects. Perhaps, thanks to the acoustic force beam, some surgeries will become 100% non-invasive. But what if, due to visualizing sound, we could learn to speak the language of spiders? Scientists from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, along with artist Tomas Saraceno, explored spiderweb architecture and its vibrational frequencies. Spiders can hardly see, so they communicate with the world through vibrations of different frequencies. They perceive these fluctuations with the help of tiny hairs on their legs. If the researchers manage to decrypt their code, they'll be able to use spiderweb to send signals to spiders about the prey they captured or the best partner to mate with. And who knows, maybe the spiders will send some messages back to the scientists. Goodbye. But the scientists didn't just stop with their research. They also developed a VR spiderweb simulator. Anyone can now take a virtual walk inside a spider web and hear how its different parts sound. I just hope the developers weren't inspired by horror games and there won't be any giant spider screamer waiting for gaming enthusiasts at the end. All these ways of seeing sound made me think that if people didn't hear sounds from birth, but saw them instead, it would have had a significant impact on our evolution. First of all, we wouldn't have any ears. Instead, our eyes would be much more developed to capture object vibrations caused by sound waves. However, 
Why would we need eyes if we could take the example of spiders and grow tiny, vibration-sensitive hairs all over our bodies? We wouldn't need any words at all to communicate. We'd just be humming different frequencies of sounds. It could possibly even relieve us of language barriers. Maybe. Write in the comments, would you like to live in a world where you can see sound? And subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my newest videos.